All right, my friend, are you ready for the next installment of my 21 Days of Beauty recommendations? We're going to be talking about September 10th and 11th. I did get a question about why the sale prices weren't showing up, and it's because I'm recording this on the 9th so that I can get this to you in a timely manner. That was what was requested by the community was to get these to you ahead of time. So that's why it's not showing the sale price, but just know that everything is 50% off. So let's go ahead and scroll down to September 10th and see what is on sale. So let's start with It Cosmetics Confidence in an Eye Cream. Now, <laughs> It Cosmetics has the longest ingredients of any brand I think I've ever seen. Their ingredient lists are quite ridiculous, usually over 100 ingredients or close to it. Uh, this one actually is probably a little bit less, but still a lot. That may not be a problem for some people, and I appreciate their enthusiasm for including a lot of good things, but when you're using a pea-sized amount of something, how much of each ingredient can really be in there, especially when you go past the 1% mark, which is usually the preservative, and you'll find the 1% the mark probably somewhere right around here, around phenoxyethanol. So everything under here is less than 1%. Now, a lot of these probably need to be at less than 1%, but we don't really know whether there is a good amount, enough of it to be effective in the cream. There's just no way to know. So even if they are rightfully below the 1% line because there are so many ingredients down here. I, I there's really, I, I don't know. I just feel like there's no way we can have enough of all of these ingredients in there to have them all be effective. So we're kind of taking a stab in the dark as far as what this is actually going to be doing for our skin. So let's talk about what we do know. At the top, we have water, a humectant, a silicone, a texture ingredient. We have shea butter. And then finally, we get down to our first nice active ingredient, which is niacinamide. Now, if you're not familiar with niacinamide, it's a very popular ingredient right now. It's vitamin B3. And it's just job is to help minimize large pores. It can tighten pores. It can improve uneven skin tone. It can soften fine lines and wrinkles. It can brighten the skin. It can strengthen a weakened skin surface. A lot of people really love niacinamide in their skincare, but some people I know are sensitive to this ingredient. They say that it burns their skin. So of course, if that's you, you're not going to like this, but if it's not you, niacinamide is kind of a, a, a powerhouse ingredient for a lot of people. It's one that a lot of people really like. Going down a little bit more, we have some moisturizers like macadamia seed oil, sunflower seed oil, and in the bottom where we have all of that stuff, <laughs> some of the highlights down there, we have colloidal oatmeal, squalane, royal jelly extract, uh, green tea extract, caffeine and coffee extract, ceramides, retinol, peptides. I mean, there's so many good things in here, but it, it's, again, there's just so many ingredients down here. There's really no way to know if there's enough in there. Some things to note that you may be allergic to avocado oil, coconut oil. Just wanted to throw that out there. I don't see any added fragrance or fragrance oils, so that's a good thing. So, I mean, for an It Cosmetics product, this is probably one of the better ones I've seen, but I can't say 100%. I know I wouldn't buy it, but I don't know. I mm, It may do something. It may do nothing except for moisturize. All right, the Cover Effects blushes. I've heard so many good things about these blush duos and bronzer duos. They look very nice. I know they have excellent reviews for great things on YouTube about them. I might actually order one or two of these just to try them so I can have that experience so that I can compare them to other things as I review them. And they are listed as vegan and cruelty-free. So this would be a recommend based on what I've heard and what I've seen. The San Tropez Express Mousse. This is a self-tanning product. The tanning ingredient in here is dihydroxyacetone. What it does is it darkens the skin by reacting with amino acids in the skin surface. It also decreases the appearance of dry and damaged skin by reducing flaking and restoring suppleness. I will put the resource for that down below. There are also some moisturizers and humectants in here to help the oil and water levels in your skin. Do keep in mind that there is fragrance non-specified and linalool in here. The reviews on this are great. The biggest complaints is that there just isn't a ton of pigment in it and that it can take a while to dry. But for a self-tanning product, it actually looks quite nice. Now we're going to get into a bunch of Bare Minerals products. This concealer I've actually tried. I got one of these in a Bare Minerals mystery box many years ago. I had the shade Summer Bisque and I absolutely loved it. I was surprised how much I loved a powder concealer. It's the only powder concealer I have ever tried and I loved it. The ingredient list for this is very basic. Keep in mind the Bismuth Oxygen 
hydroxy chloride. Some people find that to irritate their skin because it is a scratchy pigment due to its microcrystalline structure. But I know that irritates some people, so I wanted to make sure I mentioned that. The biggest critique about this is just the shade range is pretty pathetic. There's only four shades. The Very Well Rested Eye Brightener, I don't know much about this. I've never personally tried it. It looks very similar in formula to the other one, except for that it does have some kaolin in it, which may absorb oil. So if you have oily under eyes, I would probably choose this one over the last one. It does also have bismuth oxychloride as well. And it looks like this is only available in one shade. That's, I guess, because it's an eye brightener. It's not a concealer. I guess that's why. I don't know. Okay, sure, let's go with that. The Complete Coverage Serum Concealer. Again, very, very, very sad shade range, only very slightly better than the first one we talked about. It's very sad though. There are some moisturizers and humectants in this, but it is a pretty typical concealer formula for the ingredients. The biggest compliment in the reviews of this are that it's pretty easy to apply, but there are quite a few people complaining that it isn't as full coverage as they thought and that the formula is too thin, so might want to make note of that. If you want something that's a little more full coverage, this one people are saying is very thick and full coverage and can actually crease underneath the eyes for people that have fine lines under their eyes. This is sadly the best shade range from Bare Minerals in the sale. It's still really sad. Like Bare Minerals really needs to do better with this. It's it's sad. It's 2020. Come on. <laughs> at least make it a gradient. If you're going to have that many shades, at least make it a gradient. That's my thought. All right, let's go into my favorite skincare product for this set of two days. There's quite a few moisturizers over here. The best one by far is this one by Murad, the Nutrient Charged Water Gel. This is the only one that really seems like it would be worth that $30 price tag and maybe even at that $60 price tag, depending on what your needs are. It is a powerhouse of ingredients for dehydrated skin. Again, like I said in an earlier one of these, if you have oily skin, it still is possible to have dehydrated skin because if you do your skin thinks it needs more lubrication so it produces more oil so this may be good for both oily and dry skin also has some great anti-aging ingredients in here ton of humectants ton of peptides and ceramides there's that niacinamide we talked about earlier there's something called urea in here people freak out because they think it's made from urine but they make it synthetically now it's not made from urine and skincare anymore if it ever was i'm honestly not sure but i know that it's synthetic now now, and urea helps skin hold on to hydration. It actually helps the skin to increase its capacity for holding onto water. It's a fantastic ingredient. The only negative in this is it does say fragrance unspecif unspecified at the very, very bottom. But this just looks like such a wonderful product pretty much for anybody, really and truly. Uh, they say it's a solution for dryness, but like I said, I really think that you could use this if you have oily skin as well. It looks incredible. I wish that I could say the same thing for the other two that are here. This one is the Clarins Extra Firming Wrinkle Control Firming Day Cream Broad Spectrum SPF 15. My opinion, when you see SPF in an $87 moisturizer, I would never count on this as SPF for that's it. That's my only SPF. I don't want to have to apply as much sunscreen as I need on my face to get that week SPF 15 with an $87 product. So this is just probably going to be something that I would probably put on first for whatever benefits I was getting from it and then put some SPF over top of it. That's the way I would personally choose to use this. The sunscreens in here are nice ones though. We have avabenzone, homosalate, and octocrylene. These are not the ones that leave a white cast and they're also not the ones labeled as not reef safe. There are some humectants and moisturizers in here, but that's pretty much it. It's an extreme extremely basic ingredient list in the top. There are some kind of trendy-ish ingredients down near the bottom. But again, once we get past that 1% mark, even if they mean to be there, there isn't a lot of research behind a lot of these and we don't know how much is actually in there and whether it's enough to do anything. For this price point, I wouldn't invest in this. I think you can do so much better for an anti-aging skin cream. I would not purchase this one. There's also fragrance unspecified, just so you know. And then lastly, in this category, we have the Shiseido one. The best thing I can say about this is that packaging looks super cool. It looks like a spaceship and that makes me happy for some reason. Like I I want spaceship shaped skin cream. I would love that but not for $82 and with the ingredient list looking like this. Is This one is kind of like the Clarins one, but actually worse. 
there's really not much standing out to be worth the price point for this. And basically we've just got some humectants and some texture ingredients, uh, some things that may be emollients to make your skin feel smooth. But that's about it. Uh, and if you don't like parabens, there are parabens in here. And there are a lot of different types of fragrance in here. Oh my gosh, so many fragrances. This is no, 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 no. $82, $41, no, no. I would never buy this. I would never recommend it. No, 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 no. And the last thing on September 10th are the Lorac Pro Palettes. Now I owned two of these. I owned the original Pro Palette and I owned the Pro Palette 2. I also owned some of the Mega Pro Palettes. I love this formula. If you are familiar with and enjoy the Anastasia Beverly Hills formula, it performs similarly. You get that same kind of kick up in the pan. It can be a little bit messy, but it's so pigmented and they're really, really fun to play with. Of course, the color stories are a bit typical at this point. I mean, these things came out years and years ago. So you may already have all of these colors. I would have to say, I think the one that I personally had the most fun with was the Lorac Pro Palette 2. I really enjoyed that one. I like the cooler color story of it. There's a nice gradient of light, medium, and deep shades. It does lean a little bit light there, but there, there are quite a few looks that you can create with this. And I had a lot of fun with the Lorac Pro 2 before I end up uh, getting rid of it because it had gotten too old. But yeah, I really, really like this formula. I would definitely recommend it if you don't mind a messier shadow. So that is it for the 10th. Let's move on to the 11th where we only have two products. And I have tried so many of these Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencils. My biggest complaint about these, well, let me tell you what I like first. What I like about them is I love the color of them. They have so many different colors available that's amazing and they're beautiful. The colors are gorgeous. They're so vibrant and so pigmented. My issue is if I want to use these on my lower lash line, I do find that they run very relatively quickly. I mean, I'm panned eyes uh, pretty quickly. That's my, really my only complaint about these. I really haven't been using a lot of pencil eyeliners for quite a long time. I usually actually use eyeshadow on my lower lash line and I like that so much better. It tends to stay on my skin better. Uh, this is a very waxy formula and it's just, it's too runny for me. Now they did create a waterline eye pencil, which is supposed to solve that problem, but unfortunately I've never tried them and it only comes in one shade. So if you have ever tried this please share your experience down below. I would love to read what you think of this pencil. And then finally, we have the Philosophy Ultimate Miracle Worker. Okay, if anything ever says it's a miracle, I automatically am like side eye in it. Like, no, don't, don't tell me. It's not, nothing's a miracle. It's science. It's either science in a good way or science in a it does nothing way. So let's take a look at the ingredients real quick. We do have an SPF 30 in here, which is better, but at the same time, we have the same issue where this is a $78 product. At least you get two ounces, but still that's very expensive to lather on as a sunscreen. Ava Benzone is a really nice sunscreen. Octanosate, I believe, is one of the ones that is labeled as not possibly, potentially not reef safe. And octocrylene, I don't think is uh, labeled as as that. There are some good things in here like the safflower olosomes which are moisturizing. There's also the glycerin which is a humectant. It's going to pull moisture into the top, not moisture, but water into the top layer of your skin. And then there's this bifida ferment lysate. It's a yeast filtrate. So some research does suggest that it helps the skin's microbiome to be less sensitive to environmental stressors. So that's a good thing. It's actually in a lot of the Tula products. It's kind of their hero products. If you like Tula products, then you might like this. Right after that, we're probably at the 1% mark with this preservative phenoxyethanol. So below that, we have fragrance, we have retinol, we have glycolic acid, we have green tea, we have a bunch of really good stuff past that 1% mark. Because there's so much down here, it's kind of the same problem that I had with the It Cosmetics product in that we just don't know how much is in there. It's not disclosed. So at this price point, it's just, it's too many ingredients. It's making my head go, woo. And it's, I don't know whether these are actually doing anything because it's just so packed full of way too many things. So it could be doing some wonderful things with retinol and the glycolic acid and everything and even the coffee seed extract. There, there could be some really good things. It's just, it's not worth my investment. 
It's not worth me spending that much on. And also the use of the word miracle is just irritating. So <laughs> that would be another reason why I personally wouldn't purchase this. So that is it for September 10th and 11th of the 21 Days of Beauty. I will be back on Friday to talk to you about what's going to be available on the 12th and 13th. As always, please, 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 if you have tried these products, leave your thoughts down in the comment section down below so that we can all learn from you. Mad love to you. Have a good one. And I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye.